guys welcome back to more sugar more spice with mandisa that's your girl thank you thank you so much for joining me today first order of business i'd like to say thank you to all my 121 subscribers you guys are awesome i appreciate the subscriptions i appreciate the engagement on the videos thank you so much guys please continue to share and like these videos um, so that your friends can see it and their friends can see it and our community can just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger um first no secondly let me just say um um your girl is going through it because this is my last week at home i'm actually resuming work on thursday and um i am not ready to say the least um i'm really concerned about leaving q at home um and um i'm just you know i'm i'm just yeah i'm not ready but um I guess I'll eventually get used to it. Um, it's something that I have to do. There's no running away from it. So there'll be that transition that we'll be going through this week. Um, yeah. So today's video is going to be about pregnancy must-haves. Um, guys, when you're pregnant, it's rough. <laughs> wow. It's rough. Um, wow. Pregnancy for me was the ghetto, guys. Ooh. Mm. It was tough 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 like no jokes really 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 tough and um you know i understand that you know it's not the same for any two people and apparently no two pregnancies are the same isn't like i was in the ghetto with my first pregnancy with q and i might just be in nirvana with the second one so you know no two pregnancies are the same but yeah it was the ghetto guys the symptoms were wild um, I was going through, even in that, the sad thing was I was going through some symptoms that I had never heard of. I actually started getting tinnitus, um, which was a constant thumping um, in my head. It sounded like I could hear my heartbeat or blood swooshing down my body in my ear. So, nikisana quietness all the time. And at night, it would be unbearable because and that is legit all I hear. So, it's different, you know, not no two pregnancies are the same, but I had that. Another symptom that I had never ever heard of that I was going through was rhinitis. I had like wild, wild congestion in my nose. And I was snoring like I don't even know what, like what. And, you know, I was blowing my nose every 10 minutes. And I was just really clogged up. And I didn't know that it was a symptom, but Google is your friend, guys, okay? Uh, Google, moms. Google is your friend um, Another thing that I really want to say About pregnancy also is that you need to Forgive yourself, okay Say to your body Body, I'm sorry I'm putting you through this um, We're going to be okay Right, I promise And then body says I forgive you for putting me through this Because you need to go through an acceptance of when you're pregnant, that's going to help you deal with A lot of things that you need to let go of Knowing that you can't do yoga can't be the yogi that you used to be, tone it down a bit, you know, you can't be drinking, if you smoke, you can't be smoking, things like that. Um, and just that lifestyle change becomes more palatable, it becomes more easy to swallow. I'm in this situation, but it's temporary, it's going to be over. Another thing uh, important to note is, you know, some glow and some take the blow. Um, I was the ones that took the blow, all the god damn top i was oh my goodness guys my nose like i said in my previous video that i will link up here my nose my wow guys my lips they were swollen it was like i was reacting to like a shellfish allergy or something it was bad it was the pits guys i don't want to lie um but i've seen a lot of other mamas who are glowing wow their skin is just radiant they've got this thing like they've got a halo on their head, hello, wherever they go. They're just so coarse, so collected. Now, for me, I didn't glow. I took the blow, guys. It was not pretty. I didn't like myself. I remember in the car, I was looking at myself in the mirror. My husband was just... He was trying to get me not to dwell on how I looked because it was late for the girl. And I remember at some point, I had like pimples all over my face. I shut that mirror up. I was like, you know what? F it. I'm done. I'm done. I don't care anymore. That's just how bad it was, you know. But, you know, bless his heart. He was so supportive during during the times I looked like an ogre. The other thing is, you know, no offense, but people are trash, okay? People are trash and they bash. 
okay, all the time. So people are going to have an opinion about how you look. People are going to have tips on how to make you look better. They will not work, okay? People are going to have an opinion about how, how you dress. People are going to be so insensitive. And that time when your hormones are, you know, ding, 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 ding. So when it's always a trigger for you. So don't let people get the better of you. Don't let them make you into like a, a pitiful person. Take everything you hear with a, with, you know, with a pinch of salt. Because, yeah, because, yeah. So don't, don't even stress yourself about that. People are trash and they will bash you. And that is okay, okay? Uh, the last thing is, you need to know that your OBGYN is your friend, right? Uh, whoever is taking care of you during your pregnancy, that medical practitioner, they are your friend. Whatever frustrations you have, whatever questions you have, whatever queries you have, that is the person who's going to be very, very honest with you and will always tell you what is best for you, right? And the baby. So how like bile, back pain, pelvic girdle pain, whatever it is you're going through, insecurities about your body, am I ever going to be the same again? That is the person that you should ask and that is the person that you should talk to you know, who will obviously always be honest and give you the best advice. So let's get into these prenatal must-haves uh, that every woman should consider or every woman should really, you know, um, try to acquire to make sure that their pregnancy is as comfortable as possible. The first thing is prenatal vitamins or what do you call them? There's another name for them. It probably just, it just escaped me right now. But prenatal vitamins... Um, your preg omegas, your omega cares, your prega cares, that situation. I was using preg omega plus, which was a supplement of whatever they put in there, your folic acid and all the other things. Um, and an extra dose of omega in that little clear pill, which was probably supposed to give the baby smarts. I hope it worked. Um, but the reason why I didn't start with those, but the reason why for the longest time in the pregnancy I was using those was because I was struggling with availability of pregnant care, which I started with those foods and actually a great product for me. Um, but I went through a, there was a bout where there wasn't enough pregnant care. So I decided to take something that will always be available because you don't want to be pregnant and running around pharmacy to pharmacy looking for something you can't find. Right. The second thing, um, that you need to invest in is getting a good doctor, get somebody that you can trust, get somebody who's available. Preferably somebody who's at close proximity, either to your house, gonna put room, or but somewhere where you know how to accessible. I struggled, for instance, with getting care because I thought, imagine now when I'm going for the checkup at the week, and now I have to commute from where I work in CBD until Bukamusu and Mopane all the time, and I can imagine the traffic. Oh wow, I was not about to have that. So I wanted somebody, some somewhere that was really really accessible and somewhere that was really close. Um, and uh, I picked a doctor in Okonikito, it will be easy to get there. And it got, it, it's like he was pretty much halfway, close to work, close to home. Um, and then also when you're picking somewhere where you're going to deliver, which is obviously another topic for another day, it's nice to, to consider proximity. Don't be like that, guys. You're playing yourself. You will have the child at the day, the day inside the car. Don't, don't be that person. Another thing that is an essential pre natal necessity is good medical aid cover you never know what's going to happen and you just want to give yourself the best care possible and i'm not saying what's i what's i the premium care medical aid you know policies or premium care medical aid um situations insurances go or the company no just get something that is enough for you and baby so that you don't have to quaff up all that insane money every time you have to go do a scan or there's a scare and you have to do some tests just don't don't do that get yourself a medical aid if you can before you're pregnant get yourself a medical aid from a service provider in order it is well within your means right now the fourth thing that you need to get yourself or which is a necessity is a support system guys you need someone you know i know a few people who've literally gone through their pregnancies alone and me being the support system in that situation and it's really painful guys you don't want a situation where you are going to be walking through this difficult thing alone with no support system whatsoever with nobody to talk to be it the baby daddy be it your husband your spouse be it your mother your sister your friend you need somebody that can walk you through this pregnancy thing together you can't do it alone with all those videos and all those youtube no you can't 
please make sure that you find somebody. It doesn't have to be your spouse. If you don't have a spouse, it's fine. The baby daddy will do. If the baby daddy is absent, get a good friend, get a sister, get a mom, get somebody who will walk you through this pregnancy thing because guys, it gets rough. You know, there are pregnancy blues. You will hate yourself sometimes and you won't know why. You will be so overwhelmed and you won't even know who you are. So make sure that you get a support system. Invest in that relationship that will carry you throughout that time. The fifth thing is for you to get comfortable clothes. Okay? Comfortable clothes. It doesn't have to be maternity wear because I know, for instance, in Bots, it's a few shops that offer that, like specific like the whole store is a pregnancy store so it's kind of hard to get maternity wear but you can really make everything work like you can just get comfortable clothes that are not too body hugging you know that make you feel good that make you feel really really comfortable that's really what you should be focusing on comfort shoes get shoes that will not strain you you know, if you really like being in your inches, girl, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Your feet are not going to thank you for that after. So just take a break. Take a breather. When, you know, you start getting a bit heavy, get off the heels and wear shoes that are comfortable. You're really, really going to need that because comfort is key when you're pregnant, guys. That is the one thing. Comfort is key. Now, the sixth thing, you're going to need a pregnancy pillow or like a body pillow. This is going to help you sleep because the bigger your belly gets, the more uncomfortable your bed becomes. So this pregnancy, I thought it was the hype because you know your girl, I was on the tubes Googling each and every single thing. And initially I thought it was just the hype, right? But um, I think early on into my pregnancy, I decided to get a body pillow from um, uh, some lady. I forgot, I'll put her details in the description box. She actually makes them scratch, so it's not like it's been sitting in the store forever. No, you tell her your order, you pick the fabric, and then she goes ahead and she designs it for you scratch. And you get it, and nobody's used it. It hasn't been sitting on the shelf gathering dust. It's literally brand, brand new. So she had this pillow for me. I think it was around like 500 bucks. So she actually made this pillow for me, and it's one of the first things that I bought for myself, and wow. Was that not a game changer? I could sleep peacefully. Unfortunately for my husband, I was taking up a lot of space. But I was able to sleep better because of the pregnancy pillow. Because not only are you waking up to pee every other minute. Not only is the baby kicking you and doing taekwondo inside your belly. But you're struggling to find the perfect position for you to sleep. So that pillow really, really helps you. Right? So it would be good to invest in a pregnancy pillow. The seventh thing is stretch mark cream or like an ointment of sorts, whether it's tissue oil or, you know, whatever's on the market that, you know, rubs you the right way. Get a product that will keep you moisturized because your skin is going to go through a lot. It's going to stretch. It's going to stretch and it's going to itch and you're going to need to be moisturized so that you don't, you know, tear too much or you don't um, damage your skin. Speaking of skin damage in pregnancy, I was actually watching a video the other day and the lady was talking about her journey and she used to lighten her face. So sad. She used to lighten her face and she was just talking about how she doesn't do that anymore and how she had an epiphany and realized, well, you know what? This is not the right thing to do. And because she had been lightening her body for such a long time, I think it was 20 years, when she actually fell pregnant, her skin literally tore because she had like thinned out the upper layer of her skin with those bleaching creams it literally clattered like tall guys the scars look painful and you know it just goes to show how sensitive your skin is when you're pregnant so i can't you know abuse your skin like that lady not only will you get stretch marks it will tear guys so yeah invest in a good good ointment for your stretch marks another top tip that you need to do guys Nipple cream. Even if you don't have nipple cream, I'm sure any lube like Vaseline will do. If you're using your tissue oil, I'm sure any tissue oil will do. Rub your nipples. Rub them every single day. Like, don't be that girl. Rub them. Make them make them soft. Because you don't want to have hell when you're breastfeeding. You don't want to have hell when you have to feed your child and your nipples have cracked because they're just dry. 
you don't want that situation so to avoid that give yourself some nipple care right but be also very careful when you are almost term because apparently stimulating your nipples too much can actually cause contractions to start so be very very careful but earlier on in the pregnancy where you know for sure that you're not about to pop please massage your nipples and make sure that you get them ready for breastfeeding if you're going to be breastfeeding the eighth thing is a birth ball or like an exercise ball. This was essential for me because I was struggling with a lot of pelvic girdle pain. Ooh, guys. You know when you see pregnant women and they're waddling and you're thinking, is that belly that heavy? It's not even about the belly, guys. The pelvic area. You Guys. You know, when you think about dry bones, ne? like dry, dry bones, and then think about dry bones chaffing, like shaving on each other. Just <coughs> oh, guys, that was the worst pain ever. I started waddling, I think when I was eight months. Oh, guys, it's not nice. So get a birthing ball when you're at home. Sit on it by the dinner table. Sit on it. Watching the soapies. Sit on it. Chit chatting with your friends. Sit on that ball. Bounce on that ball. The ball is your friend. It's going to ease the tension and then a plus is it's going to make sure that the baby is actually in the right position. So just the posture, there's a certain way you sit on it. The posture then just allows your bones, and then Moana assumes the correct position for birth. So the ball was my friend. I, wow guys, the ball, man, get yourself a birth ball. You are going to literally thank yourself for it. And plus, after you have the baby postpartum, you can actually use it to exercise and get rid of that belly fat, right? Yeah. Another thing that you need to have is a journal of sorts. Like it could be an app on your phone or it could be an actual pen and paper situation. Just journal your thoughts, journal the learnings that you're having, the different discoveries that you're going through. It's going to be nice to have something to reference, you know, when it's all said and done. So it would be nice to invest in something of that nature. I was using several apps because I like the interface of like, there was one that I was using that I liked the fact that it was tracking the baby and I could see what the baby looked like each and every single month or each and every single week. And the other one, I liked the interface. It got my life together. I knew what I was supposed to bring to the hospital. There were articles on what to eat, how to better prepare for this pregnancy and stuff like that. So don't feel bad if you have like six different apps tracking your baby. As long as you can keep track, you are good. But like I said, do journal and keep a memory or keep like a memoir of like, things so that you can always refer back to them the last thing that you need is a water bottle guys water is your friend eh? water is your best buddy you need to hydrate you need to hydrate 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 your baby needs water they need to be living in water right so hydrate um and hydration helps with a lot of things you know you will get less headaches you know you will get you know more regular bowel movements water goes a long way guys and you really don't want piles you don't want constipation like i'm saying you don't want headaches because you can't take medication make sure that you drink enough water at least two liters of water a day that that should work so yeah guys those are my pre natal must-haves that i've put together for you i hope they are helpful pregnancy even though it was the ghetto was one of the amazing, you know, journeys that I've taken in my life. And I am forever grateful for God giving me that opportunity. When I look back at it, of course, I was being dramatic. I mean, everybody who interacted with me while I was pregnant knows how dramatic I was. I was like always just, you know, narrating to them all the uncomfortable things that are happening to me. But now when I look at my little angel, guys, he was so worth it. He was worth each and every single inconvenience that I went through. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. You know, if this is what I get after it all, I'll gladly do it all over again. So I hope that was helpful for all the mamas out there or people who are planning to have a child. Be free and feel free to inbox me on my social media platforms and ask me anything that's birth related or anything, you know, that's birth related and you know pregnancy related i will gladly help you wherever i can comment um also on the comment below and just let me know if there's anything you'd like to know about my pregnancy or any specific topic you'd like me to do a video on regarding birth and pregnancy 
Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my next video. Bye.